Welcome to Style Zephyr, brought to you by the Alec Bradley Cigar Company, home of cigars like Tempest, Coil, Sanctum, Mundial, and Cigar Aficionado's 2011 Cigar of the Year, the Prensado. Makers of premium cigars since 1996. Live true with Alec Bradley. And now your hosts, Kevin Quinn and Arthur Mingo. What's going on, folks? This is the next episode of Style Zephyr, coming to you from stylezephyr.com. We're once again over here at Casa de Monte Cristo. Yeah, really great cigar selection here in uh, Countryside, Illinois. You can check them out at 8 in, uh, 8 to 8 cigarscom as well as uh, Casa de Monte Cristo slash Chicago.com. Got my Pensado Churchill from Alec Bradley. want to once again give those guys a great shout. They are our premier sponsors for the show. Very, very happy and very grateful for their support. Got a couple new uh, releases from them out, the uh, Twisted Hooligan as of late. And uh, actually, I saw from Cigar Aficionado, they were actually coming out with a new guy called the uh, Black Market. Looked like a pretty nice, new, engaging blend. So I'm pretty happy for that to come out on the uh, for that under your local shop. So take a look at that. I'm going to be handing the show off actually to uh, Arthur really, really shortly here. We're going to be talking about all things suits, basically Suits 101. It's one of those topics where we can kind of go off on a tangent and just kind of go off, but really thankful for the kind of thinker and talker that that Arthur is. He can go really, really in-depth into things and talk very intimately as far as, you know, better makes, better models, and um, how to fit and everything else, and different kind of fits as far as American versus uh, English and Italian and so on and so forth. So both had kind of a long day today, but uh, glad to be having some really nice cigars over here. So... Yeah, sit back, enjoy, have a glass of wine, have a glass of cup of coffee, anything else like that, and uh, yeah, I'm going to hand it over to Arthur. Hello, this is Arthur. Um, Our last session, I said I was going to talk a lot about dress shirts. When you're you're looking for a suit, a suit is more than just the pants and the jacket. It's everything that you put on with the suit as well. So it's the shirt, the tie, the cufflinks if you have the right type of dress shirt, the tie bar, the belt your shoes, your socks, um, your, you know, if you keep your hands clean, if you wash your face, things like that. But today I want to really focus more on dress shirts because there are so many different types and styles of dress shirts um, that at times it can be a bit confusing as to what you should do with what element of a dress shirt. So the, the five elements I want to focus on when it comes to a dress shirt um, is your color type. Next is going to be your cuff type. Um, third is going to be the fit. Fourth is going to be the button style. And then fifth, it's really not a dress shirt issue per se, but it's so intimately related to the dress shirt that I think it's important, is your knot style uh, for your tie. So let me go ahead and get started at the beginning. Your collar type. Actually, you know what? I'm going to back up. I'm going to, before we even do the collar type, let's do the fit first. So there are three types of fit. You have the slim fit, the regular fit, and the loose fit, or it's called the relaxed fit. Um, What most people know for when they see a dress shirt um, today is they'll probably know the regular fit. Um, The more in fashion style is the slim fit, and then sort of what my dad or your father or grandfather probably wore was something closer to the loose or relaxed fit. If you're curious to see what type of fit dress shirts you have, just put your dress shirt on. You do have to button up on the way, but then pull on the sides of the body. If your dress shirt cannot really pull from your body and it's very tight onto your body, then that's more likely a slim fit. If you can really pull that shirt on both sides more than half an inch apart, then you more likely have a loose, relaxed fit dress shirt. If you could pull that shirt from the sides of your body and really not much more than half an inch on both sides, that's probably a regular fit. Um, the reason that the slim fit is really sort of like the fashion style is that the whole idea behind the slim fit, as well as when it comes to other pieces of clothing, whether it be jackets or pants, is that you're trying to sort of show off your body while having clothes on. Um, and so because of that, people really do enjoy the slim fit. When you are shopping for a suit um, I, or a dress shirt, I recommend that a slim fit is really for uh, a a slimmer guy or a guy who's in shape. Um, for a bigger person, you're going to want to go with the standard or the, the loose fit just simply because it's a bit more forgiving. Once you sort of figure out the type of fit that you want, the next thing you want to look at is collars. Now, there are various types of collars out there, but 
for me, the, the, the most traditional one, the most American, is the classic. Uh, there are two types of classic. There's the classic and there's a the button-down. Now, there are such things as button-down shirts. We're not really talking about those. We're talking more about button-down dress shirts. Um, the difference between a classic and a button-down is really simple. All button-down dress shirts are classics, except for there are buttons at the collar tips on the left and the right side. If you watch um, episodes of Mad Men, I forget which character, but there's a few characters that have their shirt collars buttoned to the actual body of the shirt. That's just what button down is. Um, primarily, there are three styles you're going to see in America. You're going to see the classic. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to see the classic. You're going to see the spread. And one of the things that's really, really interesting for me is you're going to see the contrast. Now, the classic we have sort of talked about that's your standard spread. It's not too wide. It's not too slim. Uh, your spread collar, the points are actually facing further out. Um, and so you're going to be able to see more of the underlying shirt, the buttons, things of that nature. Now, the contrast can be either a spread or a classic. All the contrast is is that the actual collar of the shirt is a different color than the body of the shirt. So a lot of times you'll see guys who will have a blue shirt with a white collar. That right there is contrast. Now that could be a white contrast standard, white contrast spread, white contrast button down. Once you sort of figure out what type of collar you want, the next thing we look at are cuffs. Um, there are literally tens of different types of cuffs out there. Um, but they really fall into, if I had to be honest, two main categories, barrel and French. The, the majority of shirts most men own are barrel cuff shirts. That is to say, you button it up, uh, one part goes underneath the other, you have a button and you go ahead and pop it in and, that, and you're done. Uh, there are variations on this. There are the, for instance, two button, um, and then you have your French. Now, with your French cuff, you need to have a fastener uh, that goes through the holes of the French cuff because the French cuff does not have any buttons on it. Uh, you have a lot of guys like myself who I have monogram cuff links. I love it because it gets a chance to show, sort of show off your personality. Um, it is a bit flashier. Um, I would not say that is appropriate for work, uh, the French cuff. The only reason why is that sometimes it can call too much attention to yourself. But if you are in the, sort of the leadership track or in the terms of Star Trek, if you are a red shirt person, uh, yeah, I like Star Trek. Uh, if you're a Star Trek guy, then um, you might be able to pull that off. Just be careful that at times um, you don't want to overdress. Uh, and on top of that, you don't want your cufflinks to be the dressiest part of what you're wearing. So when you wear cufflinks, make sure that there's at least one to two other pieces of clothing that you're wearing that can sort of stand up to those cufflinks. If there's nothing, if the cufflinks are the best thing that you're wearing with that suit, then I would suggest, if possible, going for a barrel cuff, maybe a one button or two button. There's a third type of cuff that is a little bit of a mix of the both. It's sort of falling out of disfavor, and I like it because of the old thing, and I tend to like old things. And it's called the <clears throat> it's called the Milanese cuff, but it's also called the James Bond cuff. It's a very weird cuff to describe. The best thing to say is, imagine you had a barrel cuff, sort of your standard cuff, but it was a little bit longer. You fold it in on itself, and then you didn't use French cuff, you didn't use cufflinks to hold it. There was actually a button there. It's a very weird looking kind of cuff. It's weird in the sense that a lot of people have not seen it, but it's not weird as an ew. What is that? You're not going to pull a Jimmy Fallon, yeah. You're not going to do that. You're going to go, that's nice, but different. Once you sort of figured out what type of cuff you want, the next thing we need to look at is the front button style. Now, for most people, we have the box pleat, which is the buttons are visible, uh, the fabric doubles over itself, you sew the buttons on top, and then you go ahead and button your shirt up from top down or from bottom up, depending on how you do it. You actually have French buttons, which the fabric does not fold over twice. The fabric is laid flat, and the buttons go straight on. Um, there are two other styles, but they're not really used here in America, so I'll just give them very short shrift. 
Um, the hidden button, that is to say the buttons are underneath. Uh, so when you button up your shirt, when you take your jacket off and you're walking, people actually can't see the buttons that are holding it in. And then there's a slip over. The buttons actually go to the midway point. The idea is sort of, it's, it's a dress version of a polo shirt. Uh, personally, I would never wear one. And I don't recommend people wearing them unless you really know how you're going to pull that together. The last thing I want to sort of talk about is knot size. Now, on the scale of knottiness, I guess, uh, there are really four classic knots. Kevin, do you know what they are? Okay, so let's just go with regular Windsor or... Uh... Windsor, Half Windsor, I mean, if those are two different things. I've seen them, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I, tr I try and often fail to do the Half Windsor not for work, but it doesn't really work out. I wind up inventing something on the spot. So you've seen knots at least. Oh yeah, no, I used to I used to work at Midway Airport and I, I wore Half Windsors every day. Okay. And then, not having to wear ties for a few years, I no longer knew how to. <laughs> For shame. Every once in a while, though, especially for work, now that like, the weather's breaking, I'm going to break out like more of like my grays with the brighter color check shirts. Okay. All right. Kind of go for, for like a mix and match versus a coordination. Well, you're actually not that far off. So the four standard types are your simple knot. <clears throat> That's the smallest of them. Then you have the four in hand, which is what I typically use on a day-to-day -day basis, which is a little bit larger. And just in case you're curious... Um, these knots, I'm saying them in the size of the knot that will be on your neck. And I'll explain why that's important, but that is actually something that's very important. So you have your simple, your four in hand, then you have the half Windsor, and then you have the full Windsor. Now, the thing about the Windsor knot is that the Windsor knot has a few names. The half Windsor is sometimes called the half Windsor, or it's called a full Windsor. And then the full Windsor is sometimes called a full Windsor or a double Windsor. It's a weird naming convention. Um, it's not always particularly clear. But if someone says, tie the bigger knot, then you're either going to want the double Windsor. If they call a regular Windsor a regular Windsor and a double Windsor, you're going to want the double Windsor. If they go with the half Windsor and then the full Windsor, and they want the larger knot, you're going to go with the full Windsor. Um, for those of you all counting, I don't know how many times I said Windsor in the last minute and a half, but I'm sure it's more than 25 I hope I wasn't confusing on that. Um, so the reason why it's important to know the names of these knots is that it's important to know them because their, their name describes how large the knot is. So earlier I was talking about collars. The type of collar you have or you are wearing really dictates the type of knot you should wear. So, Kevin, oh, and there's another knot. That's not really a tie, but it's still important, the bow tie. It's a type of knot, um, but we'll get to the bow tie a little bit later. Kevin, if you are wearing a spread collar, what type of knot should you wear? I'm going to go with the fullest, because it has to match the style of the uh, collar that you're wearing. All right, and he's right. If you are wearing a spread collar, then the only two knots you should wear for talking about ties out of our standard four is either the half Windsor or the full Windsor. And just for purposes of clarity, from here on out, I'm only going to call them either the half Windsor or the full Windsor. I'm not going to go back and forth because I think that would be very confusing. If you're wearing a standard collar, what kind of knot should you wear, Kevin? Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's trying to get more time. If you, <laughs> if you are... Maybe. <laughs> he, trust me, he is. Um, if you are wearing a standard collar, you're not going for a spread, just a regular shirt. Regular knot, smallest if you can, just depending on your neck or your neck size or your head size or your shoulder size, just to keep a proportion. Okay, and he's right. More or less, just because I worked and I'm extremely tired today. <laughs> excuses, that's <laughs> basically what I'm hearing, our excuses. Um, but Kevin is actually right. The two types of knots you want to use are the simple and the four in hand. Um, most boys and men and women and girls who make um, or who know how to tie a tie, they typically know how to tie 
a four in hand. It is the easiest of the four knots. Uh, the simple knot is actually, technically speaking, it's easier than the four in hand, but it is so rarely used that a lot of people just don't know how to tie it. Um, so, yeah. Congratulations, Kevin. You got that right. It was a long shot. It was a long <laughs> shot. Well, we already eliminated two, so you really only had two left. So, um, but so we're going to take a break here, and then we're going to really get into some more nitty-gritty details. Um, Kevin, is there something you want to say? This Prinsado Churchill by Alec Bradley is absolutely fantastic. I'm enjoying it very much. I have a wonderful cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and, a heavy camper. And I have a wonderful bottle of water. That's great. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm still learning stuff. I hope you folks are too. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to Casa de Montecristo, leading tobacco retailer in Chicago. Casa features a beautiful 3,700 square foot lounge with a VIP room, a conference room, and theater for hosting your events as well. Their inventory features products from companies like Regius, Alec Bradley, Davidoff, Camacho, Romeo y Julieta, Ashton, My Father, and dozens more. Their raging room includes cigars as sold as free embargo. Pay them a visit at www.casademontecristo-chicago.com or cdmcigars.com, the home of the only online retailer, proudly paired with Style Zephyr. Hi, my name is Alan Rubin, and I'm the founder and owner of the Alec Bradley Cigar Company. For 20 years, Alec Bradley has been raising and reinventing the bar for premium cigars. Based in the United States, we grow, harvest, and handcraft the finest cigars utilizing the highest quality tobaccos from around the world. Our quality has been featured in numerous publications worldwide, including Cigar Aficionado, winning Cigar Aficionado's Cigar of the Year in 2011 with our Prinsado line. While we're proud of our accomplishments, we're most proud of doing what we do with passion and an emphasis on family. We oversee every aspect of cigar manufacturing with a care and attention to detail that is unmatched. The end results are cigars that bring people together, enhance relationships, and moments that are well deserved by those who choose to participate. At Alec Bradley, we have our own flavor, uniqueness, and style. Each cigar is its own experience and is true to itself. As a first-generation cigar maker, we don't have generational history, but we honor the timeless traditions associated with fine cigars, and it's time for us to start our own traditions. So come live true with Alec Brown. For more information, please visit us at www.alecbradley.com. We proudly pair Alec Bradley with Style Zephyr to be true to you. All right, and we're back. So now that I've sort of given you all sort of a uh, general review, we're really going to go ahead and start, start talking about the small variations amongst the sort of general set and just some handy tips for when you are buying a shirt or uh, having a shirt made. Or if you have to borrow a dress shirt from a friend because you left yours at home or someone uh, lost it or it was part of lost luggage. <clears throat> well, I've been there. Actually, I've never had my luggage lost. A lot of my customers. Oh, see, I've never had that. I've never had that issue before. Yeah. Well, well that's a good thing. I should. Say. Yeah, it is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, I hear people complain about it all the time. I'm like, it's always there for it's me. Like it's an excuse to get something new. Cool, yay. Yeah, but the thing is, we are off the track, but that's part of this podcast. Um, <laughs> the thing is, though, I don't like having. I like shopping. I don't like the idea of oh crap, I gotta buy something now. I, I, necessity. Yeah, I don't like. I like. I like to take You're my time. For the chase. That's a good thing. That's the one time being a guy being in it for the chase is a good thing. Yeah. Cool. I, I, want, I want to find that right thing. Not I gotta find something right now. Nice. Yeah. We took a ramp way. Continue yeah. On the express All right, and so and, and we're back. <laughs> so there are many variations on cuffs, collars, um, fits. Not so much. There really are just three fits. Um, and we're not going to talk about body build anymore. Um, we're talking about the box pleat, the French, the hidden button on a slip over. But I do want to focus a lot of my time on the cuffs and the collars. The reason why cuffs and collars are so important is that when you think about it, the next time you look at a person who's wearing a suit, the really two major things you notice, well, three, is the collar, because you're looking at the person's face, and if you go down a little bit, that collar's going to be right there. 
you're going to see a little bit of the body of the shirt, which will sort of tell you the type of color the shirt is. But you're also, especially if you're meeting the person, meeting the person in person, yeah, meeting the person in person, well, you're going you're gonna to notice the type of cuff they have on their dress shirt. So I really believe that you really should pay a lot of attention to cuffs and collars. So earlier I discussed the different types of collars. I told you about the spread, the classic, the button down, and then the contrast. However, there are a few other types that are not as well known, but we'll sort of discuss how you should wear them, what you should have with them. Now, there is one type of collar that I'm a huge fan of. It is not as popular here in America. It's particularly popular in Asia, um, India, Pakistan, and in, in that region. And it's actually called the Nehru collar. Do you know who the Nehru collar is named after? Nehru. That's too easy. You gotta <laughs> add a bit more. Nehru collar. That was not his last name. No, try again. This is your last try, man. Try, try to see if you can salvage this. Full Nehru collar. He's wrong, <laughs> obviously. Um, he was, the guy is actually, uh, he was the Prime Minister of India, and his, he wore traditional Indian garbs a lot of time, namely shirts. Um, the, Indian, the Indians were colonized by the British, and so Indian clothing sort of adapted or adopted some uh, British styling, styling techniques, but one of the things they kept was their collar. The Nehru collar does not require a tie. You do not put a tie on a Nehru collar. You, you, you're going to look tacky, and people who know are going to shun you because it's a horrible, horrible choice. Um, that's like people who wear socks with sandals. They're annoying, and they are the worst. And I'm sorry if you are a person who wears socks with sandals. I'm just going to tell you that defeats the purpose of wearing so uh, sandals. The purpose of sandals is to have your feet out. If you're wearing socks with sandals, you should just wear shoes, not sandals. But I digress. Uh, the Nehru collar looks like a, like a traditional collar, except for there is no bend over. It just sort of hugs the neck. There's an open notch where your Adam's apple is if you're a man, or your throat if you are a woman. And that's it. There is no, there's no space for the tie to go. There's really no purpose for it. If you're interested, I highly recommend looking it up. Um, if you're going to wear a Nehru collar, you don't wear a jacket with it either. It's a traditional Indian garb. It is starting to make its way more and more into uh, dress shirt culture or fashion, American fashion. as something that is not sort of looked as those people. It's sort of being embraced like, yes, anyone can wear the Nehru collar. But it's just something that I personally like. So the ones I want to talk about are the pinned collar, the club collar, and the wingtip collar. So we're going to start with the wingtip collar. Do you know when you wear a wingtip collar, Kevin? When you wear wingtip shoes? No, he's not going to get this one either. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another bite of the apple. Just take the damn apple. <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. Okay. It's all good. All right. So first things first, uh, with a wingtip collar, you typically want to wear a bow tie. And the reason why you want to wear a bow tie is that when you wear a wingtip collar, it is when you are wearing uh, a tuxedo, tuxedo shirt. and you're yes. going and you're going white, you're going white, you're dressing down in white, which is the most formal. So it's a white tie event. Um, it, just in case you're curious, white tie, then black tie. I have an issue with that, but that's for me to deal with. That's not for you to deal with. That's, um, that's another episode. It's another episode. But white tie is considered to be the most formal of. Uh, Dressing events, and with that comes the wingtip collar. Uh, it's a floating collar. That is to say that the tips of the collar actually do not touch the body of the shirt, nor do they touch you. It is floating so that the uh, bow tie can sit underneath it, and then the collar of the shirt is on top of the bow tie. The other two I want to talk about is the pinned and the tab. Now, the pinned collar looks a lot like the classic collar or the regular collar. What is different from it is something that you like to wear. They have space for a thing you like to wear. Tie not a tie bar. Pin. Yes, the tie pin. So, the, see, you, you know things. 
Uh, they pinned. It can learn. It can learn. <laughs> uh, the pin collar has holes in it specifically designed for a tie. Mm, I'm, I'm, you know, puffing a cigar. Uh, pin. There you go. Right. Yay. Yeah. Yay. You get a gold star today Yay. for the tie pin. Um, and last but not least, I want to talk about the tab. But before we get to the tab, just one last quick uh, comment on the tie pin. Despite Kevin's love of the tie pin, I do want to say that the tie pin is a, for all intents purposes, an outdated look. Um, if you are a very, very conservative person who who wants to have a bit of glam or pizzazz, then the tie pin is something you might want to look at. But for most people, when they dress up, they prefer to go with the tie bar as opposed to a tie pin. Oh, now, yeah. and even then, it's save it for. Save it for the December, January repeal of prohibition type parties during the seasons when you want to dress up. Right. Which, in all fairness, like I would still wear it, but even then, it's I know that I prefer TM Lewin for my shirts. Mm -hmm. But the accessibility of a shirt that can take the pen and or the the bar, as they call it, like when it's the individual, like with the studs on the end to mm -hmm. secure it. Yeah. They're few and far in between. Yep. And also, do not wear. Can't emphasize this enough. Do not wear a tie pin and a modern tie bar on the same piece of clothing. It looks tacky. Much like my chronic allergy to gentlemen who choose to wear suspenders or braces with pants that already have a belt in them. Yes. Defeating the purpose. That was not a conversation for today, but I'm gonna but. I'm gonna agree with that wholeheartedly. Additionally, if we're going to talk about suspenders or braces, because this does deal with the dress shirts. And the suits and the dress shirts. Yep. It actually, were, and it, it actually deals with dress shirts. <clears throat> if you are a type of person who will consistently wear suspenders, take your dress pants to a tailor and have them put buttons, buttons. on the inside of your pants. So that way you can buy proper suspenders. I must be honest, this is my own personal rule, and a lot of people agree with me, but to each his own. Please do not, if you're going to consistently wear suspenders, if it's like a one-off event, you can ignore this part. But if you're going to consistently wear suspenders, do not have clip-on suspenders. They just look bad, one, but two, they are not able to actually help you keep your pants up as well as having the button sewn on the inside. And the third reason is that when you have clip-on suspenders, they dig into the fabric of the waist. And if you have things in your pockets, those suspenders, when they clip on, they typically have like small teeth mm -hmm. that dig into the fabric. When you have stuff in your pockets, that's going to pull that down. And those teeth marks are going to get deeper and deeper into the waistband. And that's just not good. Get yourself some braces. Even if you have to... Whether you're going to buy a brand new something from Nordstrom or if you get something from your attic or go to the thrift shop, get yourself some braces. My last, I've had a huge kind of net for three-piece suits as of late. My last two or three suits, at least two of them were three pieces. If they did not already come with the buttons already attached, I had them hold on to them and install the buttons. Yeah. I will pay more if it means I can have braces. And and the, and it's a total of six buttons. In case you're curious, two and uh, four in the front, two in the left, two in the right, and then one in the back, and two, then two in the back. Um, and the last thing about having the buttons on the inside, it actually gives you a cleaner look because the suspender goes inside of your pants. It actually looks a little bit cleaner. And you look like a you know adult. Yeah, you look like adult. Yeah, you don't look like you're eight years old. Sorry to the eight year olds who are listening. Uh, <laughs> it's not picture day. It's not picture day, <laughs> but even on picture day, you it was if you sat right, no one no one could tell if you sat the right way. Uh, but the last thing I want to talk about when we talk about uh, braces or suspenders are epaulets, and these again deal with your shirt. Most people, when you put on suspenders or bracers, they just go on top of the shirt, and that's it. Epaulets are small pieces of fabric that are over. This is your shoulder, right? Yes, dear. Yes. A uh, piece of fabric on your, over your shoulder. The idea is that you put the, the arms of the suspenders through the epaulets. So that way the suspenders never fall off your shoulder. Um, 
epaulets, I'll be honest, have a very militaristic feel to them. However, I like them. I dig them. Um, a lot of people don't. They're not... Getting a, sh getting a dress shirt with epaulets will take a little bit of searching for. Um, unless you know of a tailor who has some extra fabric that matches the fabric of your shirt. You can have contrast collars. You do not want to have contrast epaulets. The epaulets need to be of the same fabric and color as a shirt. Otherwise, they stick out. And you look like a tin pot dictator. And you don't want to look like a tin pot dictator. Hmm. I'm anti-dictator. It's very well, very well illustrated. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, back to collars. <laughs> the tabbed collar. Uh, the tabbed collar, it's a weird little funky collar. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to describe it. It looks, it looks like a classic collar, except for instead of going down your shirt, it just goes straight down to your clavicle. Um, if you get a chance to look at it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an odd duck. Most collars go up from the body of the shirt, they go up, and then when they go out, they go out at an angle. The, this collar, when it goes up and it does the bend to come down, it goes straight vertically down. It's not trying to go out. It's not, it's not wide. It's not spread. It just goes up and it makes a direct U-turn and goes straight back down. Uh, with that type of collar, you can go with a forward hand or a full Windsor. I mean, I'm sorry, forward a hand or a half Windsor. I would not recommend a simple knot. It would be too small. And I would not recommend a full Windsor knot. It would just be too large. Um, the reason why... Kevin and I continually talk about knots and collar sizes is that you want to get a good ratio of collar space between the tips of the collar and the knot. The closer the tips of that collar are, the smaller the knot you're going to want. For both aesthetic and engineering purposes, the aesthetic is that you don't want to have a spread collar and a really tiny knot. It's just going to call that knot out, and it's just not going to be pleasant. By the same token, you don't want a standard or regular collar and then a full Windsor, because that knot is busting out. Your, your collar will not be able to relax. It just will not look pretty. Um, and so that's the reason why we're always talking about that mix, mix and forth, back and forth. We're making sure you have the right type of knot with the right type of collar. Now... Before we leave college, I do want to talk about one thing that I think has sort of been neglected. And that is stays. Please use stays. They go in the collar tips to keep the collars pointing in a nice direction. Uh, make sure that you either A, use the plastic stays that come with the shirt, take them out when you have them laundered, or use metal stays. Make sure your stay is not too thick if you're going to buy your own. Otherwise, people can sort of see them. The whole idea is that they should be um, not seen, but they should be doing their job, which is to keep the collars pointing down. When we come back, I'm going to wrap up by talking about the other parts, cuffs, and then I'm going to be done with my long talk about dress shirts. Kevin? I'm good. Let's keep this on going. Until next time, guys, we'll be right back. Hello there. Welcome to Retail Row on Styles Effort. A lot of people have strong feelings about online shopping versus local small businesses and brick and mortars that make up our communities. The truth is, there are some very passionate and well-experienced folks out there that are experts at the craft and want to help teach you how to shop and buy better. Tune in to Retail Row. On Style Zephyr, the folks with experience and expertise in their respective industry will shed light on their own inspiration to help your style be true to you. And we're back. Uh, Kevin is still here. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, he's here. He, he is alive and I don't want to say well, but he's alive. Let's go with that one. Um, His friend Sato is definitely helping. <laughs> you've never been you've never been this non-talkative before. 
Uh, it's, a big day. it's a big day, man. It's Saturday. Yeah. Big day, big day at work. Big day. Big day. Huge. 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 Um, <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about are cuffs. Now, cuffs is actually, are actually a lot easier than collars, so this will not be particularly long. As I said before, you basically have your barrel cuff and your French cuff. The barrel cuff, the variations on barrel cuffs are very, very minimal. Minimal. Typically, your barrel cuff is one button, but there are some that are two buttons. Apart from that, the two variations thereof are the rounded and the notched. When you are putting your cuff, when you're putting your dress shirt on and you're looking at the cuff, a barrel cuff is completely flat when you're looking against your wrist. The rounded edge, where the button is, it's a little bit rounded. The notch is just sort of a straight angle on the inside. I highly recommend looking them up. Um, or we'll see if we can go ahead and put some pictures on the website so you can see. But there, there really isn't that much of a variation there. When it comes to the French cuff, believe it or not, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, you have your rounded, you have your notched. Um, because of the way the French cuff works, you have two other versions of the notched. They are the contoured and the angled. Um, the contoured is sort of the inverse of the rounded. The round just sort of goes around, makes the corner soft. The contour goes inside, makes like a nice soft divot. The angled is like the notch, except for it's still being just the corner. It takes up about one third of the cuff. We've already talked about the Milanese, or as I like to call it, the James Bond cuff. Let me just tell you just some really important things you should know about wearing a French cuff shirt. Your cuff links are the most important thing in the French cuff shirt. With that being said, here are a few tips. One, always make sure if you're going to wear a French cuff shirt that you either have cuff links or cuff knots. You want to make sure there's some way you're going to keep that cuff closed. I will tell you, it is annoying as all get out to put on the French cuff shirt, put on your jacket, and then remember you forgot to put on links, cuff links, or cuff knots. Because you have to fish the cuff out of the jacket, or you got to take the jacket off, but then the cuff wants to go with the jacket. It just gets really confusing and really irritating. If you're going to wear, typically speaking, there are two standard metals that cufflinks come in. Kevin, do you know what they are? Silver and gold. Look at that. Hey. A plus. Hey. That's uh, first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, I'm a big fan of matching. I'm not a fan of overly matching, but I am a fan of matching when it's appropriate. So for me, if I'm wearing a tie bar, my tie bar and my cufflinks need to be the same color. Do they have to always be the same color? No. But for the most part, hue close to that and you won't go wrong. Second of all, the color of your watch should hue close to the color of your cufflinks. So if you're wearing gold cufflinks, then you can wear earth tone watches. So you can wear brown, gold, tan, St. Maws, you can go for those, those sort of earth tone colors. Or even a gold watch. If you are going for silver, then you can go for the more bombastic colors, you know, like uh, painted black, like a shiny black, or just some really wild out there colors. Last but not least, um, at the end of the day, regardless of the fit that you buy, the knot that you use, the style of buttons, the cuff or the collar, Make sure that whatever you wear, that you feel comfortable in it. When you go shopping for a dress shirt, whether you're going to a dress shirt maker or you're going to Macy's or Nordstrom's or Lord & Taylor, if it's your first time or you don't really feel comfortable, take a friend with you. Even if they're not as good, if they're not a good dresser, take them with you because having another set of eyes can really help bring perspective. Uh, me personally, whenever I go shopping for uh, dress shirts or suits, I take my sister with me. Uh, because she gives me a different perspective. She's like, hey, Arthur, you may not be noticing this, but you have this or that problem. And last but not least, as we've said before, and I'm going to say it again, it's really important to get to know your tailor so you know your size. It would be a shame if you buy a slim fit shirt, but you buy it too large. It's going to look awkward. It's really important to know your size and to know what you're going after. One last note, I know I said my last thing, so there's a note, that's an addendum. When you're buying a shirt, especially a slim fit shirt, and I cannot overemphasize this, when you put that shirt on, it should fit neatly and squarely on your body. 
if the if when you have the shirt on, if it looks like the buttons are trying to pull out of their eyes, if you have those stretch marks where the buttons are, that shirt's too that shirt is too small for you. If you're buying a slim fit shirt and you can sort of pull away from you, that shirt's too large for you. Additionally, regardless of what type of fit you have, you really want to make sure that your sleeves come down to where your thumb sort of meets your wrist. I always say if you can do the thumbs up where that thumbs up is, when you, if you make a thumbs up right where that bend is, right where that bend is, is where you want your uh, shirt to end because that gives you a little bit of flexibility. Uh, make sure that you know what you want. Uh, make sure you take a friend and make sure you just try it on. I mean, it seems sort of weird, but there is no shame in trying on different types of shirts. Yeah, it can get a little bit time consuming, but once you find that right shirt, you're going to thank yourself that you look as good as you feel. Kevin? I'm good, man. You're good? I'm. We were saying during the break, I'm learning quite a bit, and I really appreciate it. I mean, there's variety, and it's all about being true to you as far as how the fit goes and how everything else is going to be kind of fitting to your body and everything kind of uh, ratioing out and everything else along those lines. Um, beyond that, I'm pretty good. we got a couple other topics in the tube right now. Got a, yeah, got a really cool email, actually, from a gentleman who uh, I'm going to be working on this as a personal project. You know, he was a gentleman who wants to go out with his, uh, his missus, and he's got a couple kids, and he's kind of on a budget, and sent me this email where I'm going to be making it a project of mine where he wants to be looking for different kind of resources as far as when you're a family guy or, you know, a family and you're a little bit on a budget and strapped for time and you want to have a nice date night. So he kind of looked for some ideas and some recommendations and suggestions for that. I reached back out to this gentleman, and I told him that I'm making it actually a personal priority to take this uh, project on myself, do some research for him. So I'm going to be getting on that uh, in between time at work and in between uh, between working on the podcast. So got some really cool stuff coming for you. Got some really nice other uh, topics that some other folks kind of threw into the mix, and uh, not to mention the other little checklist that we have for the episode itself. Uh, I'm going to throw out one last thank you again. Casa de Monte Cristo, the home of the greatest uh, cigar selection in terms of comfort. There's a really nice crowd in the building tonight. Uh, lots going on for the Blackhawks. March Madness! March Madness! Sorry, I could help myself, but it is March Madness. It's healthy to let it go sometimes. I know. Got the, yeah, all the ball games going on right now. You got the uh, Northwestern excitement. You got the Blackhawks. Those guys are huge right now. A huge crowd always turns out. Exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh man, I'm still enjoying this Prensado, just making it worth uh, making this guy uh, burn pretty nice and easy. Uh, you can check out Alec Bradley, Live True with those guys, and Casa de Monte Cristo over on the website in the arcade section. Got some other really big projects coming in terms of some HD video, finally, in the, uh, in the to-do list. So until next time, folks, this is Kevin. And this is Arthur. Live True with Styles Effort. Thanks, guys. Until next time.